Okay, welcome everyone. Um, it's great to be here with all of you this week. Um, it's pretty exciting to see where this technology's come. Uh, what we're here to do today is to talk to you about how to make the most of it, while also showing off some of the recent advancements that we've made and what we've got cooking for the future. So let's get started. So my name is Brandon. Uh, I'm a product manager at Microsoft working on the Windows Container Core technology. Um, there's a good chance you've seen me in some of the SIG Windows meetings or GitHub issues or bugs or wherever else. Um, and so I've been around a lot in the Windows Kubernetes community. Right now, my primary focus is working on the advancement of performance within Windows containers and Windows containers on Kubernetes. And here we've got Howard, who is one of our chief perform performance analysts. Yeah, my name is Howard Howe, and I've been working with the Windows container uh, since day one. Uh, my passion is like to look into the tough customer issues and then working with them closely to understand the performance issues or liability issues. I'm glad to be here and thank you guys for joining us. But we're really here as representatives of the amazing group of people, both at Microsoft and across the Windows containers and Kubernetes community, who are building and innovating with this technology. We've got a, a pretty massive effort running around this product, and it's with the primary purpose of empowering you to more effectively scale your business. And I know that's, that's the common Microsoft tagline, but it's true. What inspires us to do what we do every day are the amazing stories that we hear of what people can do with the technology that we create. So today we'll focus on some of the most common stories and struggles we see when it comes to container performance um, and how you can mitigate them and more effectively scale your business. So we'll kind of go into the, some of the, the background of why that is and then we'll go into some history and then do a demo and troubleshooting of how to solve performance with your containers. So let's enter a hypothetical scenario where I'm one of the many, many customers who are looking to bring their legacy applications into the modern era of infrastructure. Um, most often the generalized need can be summarized as I have a legacy application and I need to find a way to bring it into the modern cloud while reducing costs, all without requiring a massive rewrite of a technology that may have poor documentation or compatibility issues or considerable tech debt. We see a lot of companies just entering this journey and it can be an extremely daunting task. But the overall business need makes sense, especially as of late, I'm more likely to shift my capital to operating expenses to better hedge against poor economic conditions and more effectively adapt to volatile demand. One of the most essential components of running a lean business is the minimization of resource waste and specifically ensuring that every single compute cycle contributes directly to the execution of business logic. So over-provisioning, inefficiency, and unnecessary redundancy are all major threats to this, challenge, uh, to this objective. And it becomes more expensive to maintain legacy infrastructure over time. As the newer workforce generation you know, starts to use and focus on newer technologies, it becomes harder to find people who can keep these systems running at their best output. And it also, you know, technology also advances over time. So businesses that utilize modern technology and modern infrastructure are more likely to be able to provide the same, if not better, business value for a reduced cost. So bringing legacy systems into the modern cloud is a major objective for businesses today. And that's where Windows on Kubernetes comes in. So let's say I'm a business executive and I hear about running Windows on this new Kubernetes technology everyone seems to be talking about. And so I bring it to my engineering teams and they take a look into it. And wow, this looks great. I can take my legacy .NET application and which can be quite expensive running in, in on-premise infrastructure with hardware, software, and management expenses and package it up in a more consistent and predictable environment that packs more efficiently into the same resources. And it's true, uh, Windows containers are more efficient than traditional Windows Server VMs. Windows containers all share the same kernel. So, you know, you don't have to run kernel setup upon starting a container, making it a lot faster. And, you know, you can optimize and configure Windows like never before, especially as we move closer to the Lego-like construction of Windows images. And you can start and stop containers faster uh, to create more uh, scaling patterns that more appropriately match demand. And you can reduce operational costs through the use of auto scaling and uh, consistency between test and prod, and the utilization of open source software over custom internal tooling. 
So today I'm these, one of these engineers working on you know, transitioning this old technology into you know, this modern space. So I create a Windows container and in my application is it and start to run it and hit the button there. Um, so I start to create this application and well, it seems to work. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I had to fix some frameworks and what was included by default. Maybe I used the wrong image, all sorts of stuff there. But eventually it works and I can run a container and it's functioning, it seems to be putting in an output that, that's expected. And I put it in a test cluster. Oh, everything looks great. So we decide to deploy and we throw a company party, everyone gets bonuses, we're all good. Um, you know, it's finally running in production. And then things start happening. Oh God, why is, why is everything running out of memory? Pods are restarting, nothing's getting through the network. Uh, and you know, customers are reporting really slow times. And I'm like, what, what happened here and why is this happening? And this brings us back to the reality that software is still a machine. And in order to make a machine run at its best, you need to purpose design and tune it to most effectively answer the demands of its purpose. So as the creators of this technology, uh, we know that Windows is capable of some really cool stuff, but we also know its limitations and areas of improvement. So what we're gonna do here today is provide you with a starting point to learning to effectively tune and monitor and analyze the performance of your container so that you can move forward and uh, bring yourself into the modern cloud. So we'll start with a really brief history of some Windows containers and then a little bit of the, how architecture has changed. Uh, and then we'll get right into a demo on, on how to go through this. So as likely all of you know, you know, in 2008 when containerization started to gain traction with Linux containers, uh, it eventually transitioned and gained momentum with Docker in 2013. And then in 2016, Microsoft decided to take the choice to you know, add container support to Windows containers and Windows Server 2016. And since then, we've continuously iterated and added improvements to now where containerization and Kubernetes have first-class support within Windows, and we're continuing to improve it pretty extensively um, in Server 2022 and onwards. But in tandem throughout that time period, the, how a app, Windows application and how a Windows Server application changed, uh, had you know, perceived its environment changed over time. So not that long ago, um, things ran on bare metal. And you know, the application was at the lowest layer of abstraction. Scaling was literally turning machines on and off. But then virtualization came into play and it became easier to manage in more consistent and predictable environments um, and to be able to scale things more manually, especially with um, you know, uh, Hyper-V and uh, VMware. And then eventually we're in the space we're in now where applications are at the highest layer of abstraction and the focus is becoming more on the application itself and rather than the environment it's running in. Where as previously the environment it was running in within Windows, um, you had to pay attention to a lot of variables within what systems and services were running and all these sort of things. So there's a lot of uh, paradigm changes that have been made over the last years. And that's where Windows containers is right now is shifting in that paradigm. So how do we tune Windows to meet modern demands? And is it really that configurable? So we can think of it in sort of three categories. The first is the platform itself. So this is a combination of what we're doing with our engineering work and you know, what we can offer in Kubernetes with Windows, um, and also in how you're configuring Windows itself to run your application most effectively. So this includes things like the minimizing system overhead, selectively choosing which services are running, um, what image you're using, what size, what type, and all these different things of how you're optimi optimizing the OS itself. And secondly, there's the application optimization. This is you designing your application to be aware of the environment it's running in um, and ensuring that you're not adding unnecessary uh, either uh, call system calls or things that uh, might cause issues, <laughs> performance issues um, and delays. And then finally, um, a methodology in ensuring that you're watching your Windows workloads and you're observing uh, what's happening and you're going through a testing feedback loop to, to make sure that you catch a lot of these issues ahead of time and test. We see a lot of customers kind of just jumping straight into it and seeing what happens after that. Um, and it's important to run a test and simulation infrastructure to be able to ensure that the things that you might expect for Linux um, also translate to Windows as well. So what are some of the things that we've been doing to help with this? So first of all, um, we've got a whole bunch of optimizations that we've done. Um, especially working with the SIG Windows community and the engineering teams here at Microsoft. 
So one of the things we've done as of late and should be releasing soon is pretty much an entire re rewrite of the Windows container operating uh, file system. Um, we've effectively been rebuilt this from the ground up and it is totally optimized for Windows container images and you know, container operations. So with this, we're seeing uh, a 30% improvement in container import and start times. And it does lay the gr groundwork and framework for uh, dynamic image stre streaming to reduce the uh, time of an image poll to uh, ideally under one minute or less. And then finally, we have a dynamic caching solution that we're creating for Windows on Kubernetes, which allows us to uh, recache Windows on a node and dynamically and horizontally scale that more efficiently. And secondly, we're adding uh, Prometheus, further Prome Prome uh, Prometheus support with Windows Exporter. Um, and kind of continuing enabling you to effectively monitor your Windows workloads. Um, and we're supporting lots of uh, popular CI and monitoring vendors that people like to use in the Kubernetes space. And what we'll demo in a sec is the easy trace collection with host process containers. Um, and finally, we're working on a new solution uh, for the automatic analysis and uh, intelligence and performance auto-tuning for your Windows workloads. So more on that soon. And here we have Howard to talk about some of the research efforts that we've done. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. And, uh, you know, we know, you know, how challenging, you know, when customers start using the Windows uh, platform. At the platform le level, we try our best to try to get feedback from customers looking to some of the common issues we have been um, trying to resolve, um, especially in the density and the networking policy and also you know, how to reduce customer failures and, uh, and also some of the memory leaks we're being uh, seeing. So we are going to continue our efforts um, to address the issues at the platform level. This will going to help regardless where you are in terms of the, your deployments are. That's the fundamental uh, issues we need to address. At the same time, you know, software is not just like a standalone. Of course, you guys depends on our platforms. And there are things as a customer you can work with us, and also there are some recommendations uh, you know you can follow or you know kind of adopt, and to see whether that will help you uh, achieve better performance goal. So, you know, before you deploy your application, you want to ensure your application not to overly consume the resource, regardless which operating system you're you're dealing with. Right, the system only has a limited resource uh, you have. And so some of the operations, like, for example, people, you know, coming from the Linux background, they have a tendency to say, well, let's start uh, threads and just, you know, uh, applications and query things. And in the Windows world, we realize, you know, there has some overheads there. I think there's some kind of, if you're working with the Windows, we're trying to say, hey, maybe you do it differently. And also you want to prepare, you know, application ahead of time, right? So you get ready, look through the issues before you say, well, let's deploy it to the cloud. So here are some details regarding uh, the applications, right? So container image, right? Let's people keep saying, oh, con Windows container images are pretty big, but we do have a smaller size image, like for example, Nano server. So if you can deploy application on the Nano server, and you know, I encourage you guys to do so because that's going to have less overheads. Um, so if you're saying, okay, now, you know, application have dependency on certain components are in, not built in with the nano server, then server core may be another option for you to see whether your application can deploy in that uh, image. And also I have seen lots of tendency people just saying, let me build the image. And I see one time I saw like a hundred layers of the image being built. And so, so being many layers actually going to slow down your you know pod or application uh, application startup time. So I encourage you guys to reduce the layer of your application in the uh, images. And also, uh, they are currently like we're supporting Windows Server 2022. And uh, if you're still you know using the older version of the operating system, uh, talking about the images, and I encourage you guys actually moving to uh, the Windows Server 2022 in in terms of the. OS, you know, the host OS and also the, uh, the container images. So another typical problem I'm seeing people, like I mentioned it before, the people actually launching, uh, you know, the command lines to query system information, you know, with a timer pulling, pulling, pulling. And that's something, you know, you guys probably wanted to avoid if possible. Um, 
another people people are seeing like using ping.exe. <laughs> so we actually identify an issue uh, in our pod, you know, like with using the ping.exe and to to keep container alive, right? But uh, this is not really a um, good way to keep your container alive. There are some better ways doing so because when you ping, you're really flashing the, the network port. And so when you try to create an endpoint, they will have disconnect. Um, the, and also you want to pre-allocating your, you know, like pre-caching, that's like a common thing for, in terms of computer programming, right? So things you can pre-cache, you want to do that, like for example, uh, in the dynamic framework world, you know, before you do like a, you know, inside of a pre, you know, you want to do pre-jit, you don't want to jit your code, you know, in, you know, on fly or compiling your code on fly, that's going to slow down things. And also, I've been watching people like trying to use in, in a framework, when importing tools in from Linux to Windows, they just say, oh, let me compile it and everything works and uh, I'm good to go. And actually, you know, if you're looking too deeper at the, uh, because this system have different behaviors. If you're looking deeper, actually, will help you to really improve the overall your system performance in terms of storage, networking, or other components. So, the last thing is like you want to decoupling. You know, if you're doing open source, uh, you know, any frameworks, you want to provide a way to able to decoupling the components, right? I'm seeing some of the framework, you know, like in, they include everything. If you have application you try to deploy to the nano server, the GDI come with it, right? It's just like so hard to, to separate out. And so that's, you know, if in the future, if anybody wants to you know, have a, your own anything like that, think about it, how you can separate the component, just deploy the component necessary, have your application running. So here are the typical way of uh, tuning optimization, you know, like you can have the, uh, you deploy your product to the productions and you configure your workloads and you say, well, deploy to the test, then you start collecting traces. Yeah, Windows has the, you know, like a, a you know, like ECW that's built in the kernel and you can collect in your traces and you can start looking to the behaviors of your system, right? Then you go through this cycle and looking through again, 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 then to make sure your system actually before de deploy in the optimum way of performance. So, they are like, a, you know, there's this internal system, you know, like a resource usage, you can use in ETW, make sure they are actually uh, being monitored, being understand. And also their application logs you can go through, like for example, as server logs, HCS, and uh, you know, uh, the, uh, and also the HNS logs you can look through. So here are two examples. One, the first example actually related to the uh, AI server. This is like real customer scenario, uh, return of reliabilities. So we're seeing 503 means service not available. And so how we solve the problem, right? So of course you want to go to the roots of the problem, which you need to look at the AI server logs and how do you get the logs out? And so it can be challenging because the, you know, the server maybe go off, the container may go offline. How do you get the log out, right? So that's uh, issues we need to look into. You know, here we, you may want to map the AI server, you know, log folder to your host then even the container go when offline, you can still able to retrieve the AI server log. The second issue is related to the um, the AI server, you know, uh, the AI server performance. And so, as you can see, we're using some common uh, practice command line to capture the uh, ETW trace log at the kernel level. And also, there's one, you know, WPRP file which defines the necessary providers are needed for troubleshooting the Windows container performance. So here's a, a typical day for me to work in front of a, a computer and uh, there's cloud. I'm just sitting in my home with looking at the big monitor. So on the windows, the left side window, like for, for me, is the WSL and the right side is the windows console. Uh, as you, can, you guys can see the both side actually looking at the same folder, right? So I'm taking advantage of both world, right? So Linux world and the windows rich UI world. So I uh, using the Kubernetes and deploy my nodes and deploy my pods, everything. So now it's time for me to understand what's going on with my node. So one of the uh, key technology enable us is called the host process container. And Mark and James uh, from SIG uh, uh, Windows 
they developing the, the technology, they have a talk on the YouTube. You guys can go back to listen to the details. So with the host OS containers, we're able to execute the command without go log into the cloud, right? So this, this technology is not just limited to the, uh, you know, AK, the uh, Windows uh, cloud. It can be deployed to any cloud you want it. So you collect, run execute command on the node and collect the traces. And you just like uh, run the same com command, you know, called easy copy that that's, that's Windows cloud solution, right? But you can try other two, I'm pretty sure other vendor has the same solution and bring that file down to your desktop. So how do we achieve that? Actually, it's really straightforward and nothing really fancy and uh, with a minimum amount of code, you can achieve this automation. If you look in this, uh, the YAML file, the only difference here, you know, compared to regular, you know, container, you know, the past spec is the security context options, which allows you to specify, you know, which user context you want to execute it uh, under, right? In here, I'm just saying, yeah, let's execute under the, uh, uh, the system context, give you full power. You can do anything you want to, to your node. And so also underneath there, you need to pick the nodes where, which node you want to deploy to, which is using a label and label the nodes you want to do the, your investigations. So they only take like six steps, right? So to go through the, uh, the data collection process with automation, you need to, of course, you need to set your accounts, you know, you know, which one account you want to run it under. Then you want to create the host process containers. Then you start executing the commands, collecting the traces from using the host process containers. Then you, you, know, you, then you start your scenarios and uh, stop collecting the traces and upload traces to uh, you know, cloud storage. Then after that, bring it down. So. One time a customer, you know, gave me a, a cross dump. It's about eight gigabytes. So it took me eight hours to download that uh, trace file. But if you upload to the cloud storage, it takes about like 10 minutes to, to bring it down. So that's why I encourage you guys to do a similar kind of a approach. So this is nothing fancy. It's just setting up some of the uh, parameters just to show you, you know, how you name your clusters and the uh, storage or that is nothing um, to worry about it. And so also let you guys know all the script actually is, you know, checking to the GitHub and you can just go there, download and play with it. So there are two windows here in the one on the, uh, on my right hand that, that side, um, it shows the, how to collect the traces. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And, uh, uh, you know, using this, the only difference is when you say Kubernetes execute and gave the host processor, processor name, then write the campaign just like assume you execute on that node, right? That's really straightforward. And you execute your scenario. The scenario you can replace with whenever scenario you want it, right? You can replace density or you know, network policy whenever the scenario you want to execute. And this framework will guarantee you to get the uh, traces off your system and let you to understand what's going on. So this right hand side here, it shows a little bit complicated, but the thing is still the top part is showing, you know, at, in the Azure environment, how to get uh, your uh, SAS token. And so with the SAS token, you know, able to copy your uh, traces to your storage and then bring it down to your uh, local, uh, local machine, right? So it's really straightforward, nothing uh, fancy here. So here are some, all, you know, the, the log files, you know, from that script execution. Um, so first of all, you set the accounts, then you can see, you know, there are some default system uh, paths running on your system. And uh, this like pre, before we actually uh, apply the, uh, the host container, then you want to select the nodes, you want to uh, do your testing. And now we apply the, uh, the host process container and it's running. Then we can start execute the command inside that node. You know, in this case, it's going to make a, a directory on D drive, which is called perf. That's where I can store my, uh, uh, the trace file to the local. So here actually we start executing the command, which is starting collecting the traces. So even on your local machine, you can do the same thing just without that at dark, you know, Kubernetes execute, you can run the command on your local machine. You can still, uh, looking to your, you know, your local machine performing this same way. 
So then we apply the scenario and then stop executing and generate the tokens. And uh, then we copy, easy copy the, uh, the trace file to the cloud and bring it down to my system, right? So once you are in a system, there's a, a tool called the WPR, uh, the WPA, right? So this actually is public available. You can, you can uh, you know, download and to use it. So this gives you a detailed information about your nodes, you know, what's OS running and how much memory CPU all in terms of that, you know, um, also up here. So pretty much your system is uh, open for you. If you know, you have that, as long as you want to dig it in, you understand, you know, how it looks like. So here's a perfect example. I show a busy system, right? So if you look at the idle, uh, idle is only like 3.3%, uh, your system running probably about like 96% CPU are busy doing things. And um, so this, this is the way for you to understand what are the processes that are running, why they are running, and you can even using the call stacks to see the, uh, the functions actually causing the CPU turns. Thank you. Well, thank you, Howard. Um, again, like Howard said, you can uh, download these on the, we've open sourced the scripts here, and we're also happy to talk about uh, any of these, you know, in person after this. Um, but one thing I want to mention is that, you know, we want to work with you, and we want uh, to hear feedback from you and to find ways to make Windows better, because helping you helps us make Windows better. So a couple things here. Um, we want to make Windows performance analysis easily available to you know everyone here and virtual and et cetera. Um, but so our plan is to continue producing and publishing uh, updated guidance and guides on how to you know run through all of these processes and analyze your traces and everything. You know performance is a huge subject, so um, there's many ways you can slice it, and you know we're going to be working on making that easily accessible. Um, and secondly, just being able to talk to us and you know work with us. Uh, to help us, you know, help you work through your traces. And secondly, that uh, auto analysis tool, um, you know, that we were talking about before, we plan to make that publicly available as well. And uh, just getting in contact with us. Um, so I'm at SIG Windows every week. Uh, so feel free to just jump in, jump on there, and ask me whatever crazy questions you have. Um, and we also have our public Windows containers repo, which you can submit issues, bugs, and logs, and all sorts of stuff. And we do take a look at that. Um, and yeah, and share your stories too. Um, we like to see people, you know, talk about how they've deployed their clusters or how they've set up the, their Windows workloads. Um, there's a lot of good talks. I mean, Relativity had a good talk at the Detroit KubeCon. Um, it's always good to, for us to hear how people use our technology um, and share that with the world, and that helps us get better. So yeah, feel free to come up to us and ask questions and uh, talk with us whenever. We're here to help. Yeah, we love everyone. to be uh, challenged. So bring your questions to us <laughs> and uh, we'll try to help you out. Thank you. All right, throw them at us. Uh, hello, Julius. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, about uh, uh, maybe some options how to minimize uh, the image itself uh, at first yeah you need to choose the base image as small as possible but uh, if you're trying to move legacy applications usually those have a lot of dependencies so yeah there are yep. tools like uh, de dependency walk and such but maybe you have uh, another suggestions that would collect uh, needed assemblies Yep. Well, okay. So first to start, um, just in the last few months, we uh, were able to reduce the size of the Windows images by 40%, and we have more coming in the next few months. Um, a lot of work being done on that there. So absolutely, here, here uh, image size is a, is a tough problem for, for Windows especially. Um, so there's a lot of work that we're doing there on enabling you know, better construction and more like selective construction and enablement, enablement of services to slim down the image. Um, there's no tools that exist right now to support that, but there are ways you can um, extend Nano Server to be able to meet your specific needs. But we've also found ways to effectively minimize the size of Server Core too. Um, and plus, with the image caching and you know teleport, or the, the yeah the, the image caching technologies, um, we'll be supporting that as well. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, so I think it's doable, but just like a, 
like I said, you know, if you, you, you're familiar with the, um, the tracing so that, you know, you can look into see what are the dependencies. And uh, I think in the long run, we want to automate the whole process to give you recommendations to see, let you see like what kind of a uh, component need to be bring into your, you know, the bring onto the another server, right? So I have done some of the analysis myself, but I know it's a, uh, a challenging task. Uh, but uh, in the long run, we wanted to make sure we have tools to fully support you guys so without going through all the, the troublings, you know, uh, the hard process we have to go through. Thank you. Okay, understood. Thank you. Hi, great presentation. Uh, hello, I'm over here. Um, about the tracing uh, files, right, the, the files that, that you used by, by the tracing and generated, it, like I know about Windows Performance Analyzer, but is there more tooling coming out or, or like being put progress into when it comes to, like, or, or maybe it just uh, making available for, for other operating systems? Because we have, in our company, we have a lot of uh, engineers that want to do the tracing as well. Uh, not necessarily they run Windows computers on their main machines. So we, like, we wanted to make everyone be able to analyze it or maybe uh, it's the, like, enable a web service where they could uh, put the, trace, the tracings and, and see, the, yeah, see the, the, the results in a web pl platform or anything like that. Yeah, we have uh, exactly that that we're working on at the moment. Um, more details to come. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, even on Windows, there are m multiple ways of uh, you know, turning out your traces in the logman, WPR, you know, there's purview, among many different ways. But the thing, with the eventually, you have to collect the, the trace and using different tools to do an analysis on top of it. One of our goals is trying to, uh, to make the process easier for people to uh, able to just understand instead of going through all the learning curves there. Thank you. Great, thank you.